Tracking your heart rate with one of these guys isn't just for professional athletes. Today, we're gonna to take a look at HRV, also known as heart rate variability, and discuss your risk for cardiovascular disease and why it's important for the average person to be taking a look at their heart rate. So I'm sure at some point you guys have taken a look at your resting heart rate, either through your Apple Watch or using a heart rate monitor like the Polar one that I have, or maybe through Whoop. And it's a great way to look at the efficiency of your heart. So resting heart rate, having a low resting heart rate is a sign of good cardiovascular health. Professional athletes have somewhere in the mid to high 40s. A healthy young adult is gonna be somewhere in the low to mid 50s. And an unhealthy adult is gonna be somewhere in the 60s to 70 range. Now this is gonna depend on a lot of different variables, but that's just a general range of resting heart rates that you can look at to see if your heart is efficient or very inefficient. And that could be a sign to maybe get out and start exercising or start taking a look at your diet. Now your HRV is very different from your heart rate. Your HRV looks at the variability between each of those beats. And if you guys didn't know, there's actually some timing differences between beats, and that gives us a window into what's called your autonomic nervous system. Now, without getting too nerdy, I'm gonna quickly break down what those two systems are. You have your sympathetic nervous system, also known as your fight or flight, and you have your parasympathetic nervous system, also known as your rest and digest. These two systems are constantly in juxtaposition to one another. They're balancing out your system. So when you're really anxious, or really stressed out, either physically because of an exercise or uh, mentally because of work or whatever's going on in the world right now, uh, your parasympathetic nervous system is gonna balance it out. Now when that system gets out of whack, like there's too much stimulus on one side or there's too much rest on the other side, then your system is imbalanced and your body tries to do its best to fight that. But if it's unbalanced for too long, then we start to find ourselves in what's called a disease state. And this is where we start using things like HRV to be able to look at your cardiovascular risk. So now let's take a look at the devices you're gonna need in order to track your HRV. We can leverage the Apple Watch, the built-in one that they have, but it's not gonna be as accurate as using a chest heart rate monitor like the one I have from Polar. This is the Polar H10. Uh, also, Whoop makes a great strap that you can leverage, and they have a subscription model that coincides with it. Uh, that's really user-friendly and super easy to use. Uh, and then the apps that you're gonna need. So Whoop has theirs built in. For me, I paid for a premium app called Elite HRV. Now, I don't have any sort of affiliation with that company or the app. Uh, I just think it's a great product and I've been using it for years. So now that you have your heart rate monitor device, let's go ahead and get your first HRV score. Now in order to do this, we're gonna have to track your morning readiness for at least a couple of days before we get your baseline. To do this, you wanna take your reading first thing in the morning, before you've had any coffee or done any sort of exercise or eaten anything. The reason why is those three things are gonna dramatically impact your heart rate. So what I recommend doing is picking some sort of comfortable position, whether that's laying down, seated, uh, or even standing, but you want to not be moving. You wanna be sitting still as long as you can and being comfortable. So I do mine either sitting or laying down. And the reason for this is because we want to get as accurate of a reading of your heart rate impulses, and if you're moving around, your heart rate's gonna change, or if you're stressing or doing something on your phone, it's just going to skew the results. So make sure that you haven't eaten anything, you haven't done any exercise, and you haven't had any caffeine when you're doing your morning readiness. Now you can set the time frame to be a minute, two minutes. I do mine for five minutes for the most accurate reading I can get. So now that you have your HRV score, what do you do with that information? How do you know if it's good, bad, high, low? What do we do? So if you have a low resting heart rate and a high HRV, that's gonna be an indication that you are in good standing. You're in good cardiovascular health and you're at low risk for cardiovascular disease. Great news. If you have a high resting heart rate for your age and a low HRV, then that's gonna be an indicator that you are at high risk for cardiovascular disease or other diseases. So what I recommend to you, based on whatever your score is, based on your age, your ethnicity, your genetics, your sex, all these things, uh, your lifestyle habits, is you would start making changes. And what I typically recommend for cardiovascular health is getting out and exercising at least 20 minutes per day. 
looking at your diet, monitoring what you're eating, maybe try intermittent fasting or start implementing some whole foods into your diet, more fruits and vegetables, things like that, and less processed foods. This is only gonna benefit your general health as well as your cardiovascular health, and the exercise is going to improve the quality of your life as we age and as we get older and older. So for you guys at home that are just looking to maintain good health and live a long, healthy life, you're not trying to become a professional athlete. You're not trying to go out there and really push yourself you know, in athletic endeavors. That's totally fine. Use this information to take a look at how well rested are you that day? Is your sympathetic nervous system really activated and your parasympathetic system is, is trying to catch up? Do you need to get some rest in there? And the apps will tell you that. It'll let you know, hey, maybe you should take it easy today, get some sleep, hydrate, uh, this should be an active recovery day. And then other days it's gonna be like, you got a 10 out of 10 score, get after it. Today's your day, this is like a PR, feel free to really bust your ass. If you gotta stay up late that night and work through the night, that's great, you're properly recovered. So this is just a great tool for us to kind of be able to see how our cardiovascular health is and whether or not we're at risk and should be concerned. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this and found it informative. I didn't wanna make it too nerdy, but if you guys want some more information, leave me a comment down below with any questions you have. I'll answer them as quickly as I can. And as always, be healthy, be active, and be yourself. Everyone's got something to give this world. You just gotta go out there and give it. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.